Let us start lecture 32 on the courses corrosion protection methods. We will continue our discussion on the topic that is change in electrode potential and corrosion protection. Now, we have seen in last uh, two lectures that uh, corrosion protection uh, can be possible if we take the potential either on the negative side or positive side. So, we have only talked about negative side that means, when you are doing cathodic polarization and then the metal which is to be protected can have a very low corrosion rate and that happens because of two reasons. One is the you are sending electrons to the metal and that is why you are taking the potential down from the steady state potential and another reason is the current enters or the electrical current enters through the anode via electrolyte to the metal which is to be protected. So, these two things are to be observed and then we could have a very nice corrosion protection. Now, in one aspect we could understand that if we add that particular metal component to a negative terminal of a DC power source, then definitely we can send electron to that metal. So, that the cathodic reactions happen on the metal and that actually reduces the corrosion rate. Now, the other aspect which and that particular aspect we call it as ICCP or impressed current cathodic protection. The other aspect which is basically related to sacrificial anode where also we have indicated that the potential again there drops. In fact, you are, we are making the metal which is to be protected as cathode by connecting that particular metal component to an active metal in the galvanic series in that particular electrolyte and that active metal would act as anode and the metal which is to be protected acts as cathode. So, the active metal dissolves and during dissolution it leaves electron to that active metal which is nothing but anode. That electron goes to the conductor and then enters into the cathode part which is the metal and now their cathodic reaction happens and that way if we try to locate try to understand that particular aspects we will again see that in fact in the with the help of mixed potential theory that the, that the current does enter into the cathode or the noble metal when it is connected to an active metal galvanically in an electrolyte through the electrolyte into that particular metal. So, one condition is met. Another, another thing is the electron flows through the conductor from anode to the cathode. So, these two conditions are maintained. So, let us understand how, uh, let, us, how let us understand why that cathodic polarization is also active there. And in order to understand that, we need to understand mixed potential theory for a galvanic coupled metal metals like iron and zinc. So, let us understand that part. So, the topic is same as change in electrode potential and corrosion protection. So, we talk about sacrificial anode and associated cathodic polarization and that leads to cathodic protection. Right? So, now the best example is iron and zinc couple. Why we are taking this couple? In fact, we can also take the couple of iron and magnesium or iron and aluminum. But let us look at this because it is very common to us that we always use or most of the uh, uh, many of those applications rather not always many of the applications we use galvanized sheet metal where zinc is coated on top of iron or steel mainly a low carbon or medium carbon steel. Now, there what we see this galvanization happens uh, there are different methods like dip galvanization or there could be a possibility of having galvanyl process or uh, electro deposition of zinc on steel surface all those methods are possible very common practice is galvanization is deep 
galvanization okay where the metal is dipped in molten zinc bath which contains little bit of aluminum around 0.2 percent that is necessary because it actually helps in making the interface reaction between iron and zinc conducive for a very good coating okay so let us not get into that aspect rather we concentrate on the corrosion part aspect aspect whether zinc actually takes the potential down okay of that metal so that we are actually having cathodic polarization and then we get cathodic protection so in this particular couple zinc acts as sacrificial anode and this is noble component in that galvanic couple why this is and let us say we are taking a simple acid solution now let us say we take pure acid solution and H plus plus 2E equal to H2 this is my cathodic reaction. So, now we have one cathodic reaction and now if we dip steel low carbon steel or iron in HCl or uh, HCl then we will see that iron is dissolving by forming hydrogen bubble on the iron surface. Similarly, if we dip zinc plate or zinc block into HCl, then we will also see hydrogen bubble on top of zinc surface and zinc will dissolve in the form of electrochemical dissolution in the form of zinc ion and in case of iron, it will be in the form of iron ion. So, if we separately see their behavior, you would see that in fact, iron would dissolve more in acid rather than zinc if we do the experiment separately like we have taken a beaker like this two beaker and in one beaker we have iron block another beaker we have zinc block and both cases same condition temperature pressure hcl concentration all those concentrations are same then we would see that the dissolution rate corrosion rate of iron is actually more than zinc. So, now that can be explained with the help of mixed potential theory. Now, if we try to look at these two effects separately, what happens? So, no, now we can assume that iron is having its reduction potential, standard reduction potential or equilibrium potential to be fixed at minus 0 0.44 which is nothing but the uh, standard reduction potential of iron at 25 degrees Celsius 1 atmosphere pressure and for zinc let us take it as minus 76 volt uh, which is the standard reduction potential for zinc let us assume that and hydrogen for hydrogen let us take it as 0 fine. So, now we could see that if we try to look at the uh, reduction potential so now we have 0 for E0 H plus H2 minus 0 0.44 volt for E0 E naught rather Fe2 plus Fe and minus 0 0.76 volt E naught zinc 2 plus zinc. Okay. So, now we could see that if we consider the reduction potential, then this will be noblest, most noble compound, okay, most, most, most noble uh, reduction reaction, then uh, little less and this is the most active. Okay. So, now accordingly, we can look at this. So, this is log i, this is E volt, this is ampere per centimeter square. Now, we can make it as a 0 volt, this is minus 0 0.44 volt. Now, let us say iron has 
I 0 which is exchange current density on iron surface at this point and hydrogen has exchange current density to be let us say here which is on iron surface. Now, if we consider activation polarization, they will have their anodic part, this is my cathodic part, this will be my mixed potential or E chord. this is E core and this is my I core iron and here if I try to look at the reaction ok. So, this is anodic polarization and this is anodic polarization. this is cathodic polarization. Now, if I try to look at for zinc, so let us say this is minus 0 0.76, this is 0, let us say this is uh, I 0 hydrogen on zinc surface and let us say this is my I 0 which is exchange current density for zinc on zinc surface and similarly we have anodic and cathodic polarizations and meeting at E core or E mix which is the mix potential. So, this is I core zinc and interestingly I 0 hydrogen on iron surface it is little more than I 0 hydrogen on zinc surface. At the same time if you see these two values, these two values are uh, there are wide difference in their value. So, that if we consider zinc, zinc will act as uh, anode because it is active and iron will act as cathode because this is having a lower uh, rather more uh, more uh, lower uh, uh, electrode potential ok in terms of magnitude and also if you see negative value. So, this value this one will move up in the potential axis. So, this is log i of course, and considering ampere per centimeter square which is current density. Now, if we try to compare these two ok. So, uh, let me put it little steeper. So, if I compare, so this is my E chord, this is my I chord zinc. If we compare, we see that both the axes are same length scale, then I chord iron is more than I got zinc if we put it separately in a beaker containing HCl. Now, if we come if we come if we add them together and then follow the mixed potential theory, we will see a fantastic situation coming up. And there we could see that the iron dissolution rate, which is decided by this line, this line, this will actually drop down. Let us look at. Now, when we compare, when we connect them, so now we have an experience, experience. So, when we have experiment like this, so same acid, we have this is and then this is zinc. This is iron. When we have such situation, let us see what happens. For that, let us draw another plot. We will just put it 
So, let us say this is my 0 volt for hydrogen reaction, because only one cathodic reaction is taking place. Since hydrogen uh, reduction potential is the highest among all those three reduction potentials we have considered here. So, for iron let us put it in a blue line. So, this is my I 0 on iron surface and this is my I 0 hydrogen on zinc surface. So, uh, for iron let us put all those values corresponding values. So, let us say this is my value 0 0.44 minus and then another one is minus 0 0.76. So, let us say that is here. So, now we have to see individually what happens. This is my cathodic reaction. And this is my anodic reaction iron dissolution. Now, we have to also see the behavior for let us put it little up. fine. So, this is for 2 plus and this is again fine. So, these are the uh, reactions I have just mimicked those both those individual things here. Okay. Now, as we know as per mixed potential theory total rate of cathodic reaction and total rate of anodic reaction should be same at mixed potential. And we can do that by adding up the cathodic current densities as well as anodic current densities. Here we have two anodic current densities, one is for zinc dissolution, one is for iron dissolution, one is blue one and then uh, this uh, brown one and uh, uh, this is for so, now if we have to add the total current densities corresponding to cathodic reactions. So, hydrogen reactions are happening both on zinc surface as well as iron surface. So, we are adding it up. So, if we add it up, let us do it with green color. So, we add it up. So, this is my I C hydrogen on iron surface plus I C hydrogen on zinc surface and this is individual one I C hydrogen on iron surface and this is I C hydrogen on zinc surface. So, this is basically the green one is the combined cathodic current density this is nothing but I C total. Now, we have to find out the total anodic reaction rate. So, the total anodic reaction rate if we follow it up with the pink one. So, as it is moving up at this point it will experience another anodic current densities kind of current density. So, if we add it up it will go like this. So, now if I try to look at, so this particular thing is I C or rather I A zinc plus I A iron and here this is corresponding to I A zinc and this is I A iron. Now, my mixed potential is located at this location. Okay. Now, so now this is my condition 
which is i total i a total. So, at this point we have the condition of i a total equal to i c total. Now, if we try to look at the individual current contribution, so that contribution would be if I try to extend that So, this will be my mixed E mix or I can say E core for the couple. Now, there I can see some interesting thing happening. One interesting part is if we look at the dis joint between this line and this line. So, that is basically the I A. So, this corresponds to I A zinc for couple and this point corresponds to I A iron couple. Okay. Now, before now we can understand uh, what happens to the iron dissolution. Now, before we connected both those iron and zinc piece separately we did the experiment, the corrosion rate of zinc was at this location. So, this was my location for corrosion rate. So, this is I core zinc and for iron this was my I core iron and we can see that I car iron is little more than the zinc. So, if we follow it up we see that that I car iron is little on the right side as compared to I car zinc when they were dipped individually in that acid solution. Now, once we connect them and we achieve mixed potential then we could see that the iron dissolution rate is coming down to this value. So, this value is actually is less than I A or rather I core iron uncoupled. Okay. And let us see what happens to the zinc. So, zinc corrosion rate is this one where I A zinc for couple is more than I core zinc uncoupled. And at the same time the potential before put in the E core or the mixed core potential for iron when it was uncoupled that value was located here. This is E core iron I can say uncoupled. And for zinc, this was my E core, E E core zinc uncoupled. Now, interestingly, the I, I A corresponding to the couple, I A zinc corresponding to couple, and that mix potential, that potential corresponding to E mix which is the couple E mix that value is more than the, the mix potential or E core when it is uncoupled. So, if we write down I can see that E core zinc is less than E core and this is uncoupled and the E core zinc coupled. So, the active component the E core corresponding to the mix potential for the coupled one is more than the E core of zinc when it is uncoupled. So, in that case zinc is actually having increase in potential from the steady state potential when it was dipped individually. And let us see what happens to iron. 
in case of iron this is one observation and the second observation E core and to be very uh, precise. So, this value is nothing but E core for coupled ah, sorry this value is E core system the system E core. because this value is same for both iron as well as zinc when iron and zinc are coupled. Now, if I try to look at what happens in case of iron. So, that means here we have for the zinc potential increases from the potential individual potential when it was uncoupled for zinc. goes up, but for iron E core iron which is equal to E core coupled let us put it as coupled is less than uncoupled. So, now here I could see that the potential drops. So, when potential drops it means cathodic polarization and because of that cathodic polarization that means this potential this potential. So, it has dropped from this to this and because of that potential draw for iron when it is coupled with zinc corrosion rate has gone from this point to this point this point. So, this is the new corrosion rate for the iron when it is coupled to zinc and since it is log scale. So, that means there is a huge reduction in corrosion rate for iron when it is coupled with zinc compared to uncoupled one and that happens because of the potential drop with respect to E core when it is individually dipped in acid solution. So, then again I could see that corrosion rate of iron is less than when coupled with zinc is less than corrosion rate of zinc ah sorry iron when it is uncoupled and this particular situation happens because it is because of and this particular thing happens because cathodic polarization and if cathodic polarization happens what happens to this E mix this particular potential what happens to uh, I core uh, sorry what happens to I C hydrogen on iron surface. So, I C hydrogen on iron surface when it was not coupled. So, that location was here, but once it is coupled to zinc I C hydrogen on iron surface has actually gone to this location. So, I am just drawing it on the right side of this on this blue curve. So, it is a crisscross. So, this particular point I am talking about. So, this is falling on the blue line. So, here potential drops I C hydrogen on iron surface increases because this I C hydrogen goes from this to this. This is for increase in 
hydrogen evolution on iron surface. Since I C of hydrogen on iron surface under the coupled condition is more than I C hydrogen on iron surface when it is not coupled with zinc. So, now I could see that we are actually sending negative current to the iron and that happens without the addition of any external power source. This happens just because of adding it to or connecting it galvanically with, a, with an active metal in that particular solution. So, we see that zinc is active compared to iron. So, zinc would dissolve at a higher rate because we see that zinc dissolution rate or the I core zinc under coupled condition is more than I core zinc under uncoupled condition and that actually increases the corrosion resistance of iron by reducing the corrosion rate of iron under coupled condition. We could see that and that exactly happens because of cathodic polarization and increase in cathodic current density on iron surface which is to be protected. Here iron is protected. So, now so that means we could see both the conditions are again met. So, this happens because of more electron to iron. So, if we try to see the circuit, so this is let us say this is iron piece and let us say this is zinc piece instead of having joined both the metal pieces. So, I can just connect it and this is my acid solution, acid level let us say. And if I try to look at, if I put it, if I let us say put a voltameter and ammeter in the circuit. So, this ammeter would show current will flow from this end to this end and this voltage would show some positive value. So, since voltage shows positive value, so E cell, this is acting as a cell is positive. So, as per free energy equation minus N F E cell, since this is positive, this is negative. So, this is a spontaneous process, this is zinc and so since current flows like this, this is electrolyte, current will flow like this. So, the current would leave zinc surface and enter to iron surface and since current is flowing zinc is dissolving now zinc is dissolving in the form of zinc plus plus electrons are left and these electron would flow and come to this place and that will facilitate cathodic reactions. So, again I could see since it is a galvanic couple and current flows from iron end to zinc end this would be positive and this would be negative and this would be cathode and this would be anode. And since anode dissolves and protects iron, so that is what we call zinc as sacrificial anode. And it is protecting iron because because of one iron becomes cathode, cathodic polarization takes place, Th third is electron flows to iron from zinc via conductor. So, this is this particular line is a conductor okay. and fourth is current which is I leaves zinc and enters iron in the electrolyte and we could see all the conditions for cathodic protections are met. So, this is another form of cathodic protection
and this is the second form where we do not need external power source. Fine. So, we have explained cathodic protections, the two modes of cathodic protection, one is ICCP which is impressed current cathodic protection, where we connect a metal which is to be protected to the negative terminal of a DC power source and whereas in sacrificial anode this is also following the cathodic protection principle, but here we do not need any external power source, but at the same time we actually protect iron because of sacrificial effect of zinc or dissolution of zinc or preferential dissolution of zinc and it protects iron. So, let me stop here, we will continue our discussion on this very topic. So, since we have understood cathodic protection because of cathodic polarization, we need to understand the anodic polarization as well as corresponding anodic protection and we will see that that is only applicable in case the metal shows active passive behavior in that very electrolyte. So, till then thank you.